Hello, so in today's lesson we're going to look at how does a gas exert pressure. Uh, now please make sure that your phone is off, you've not got the TV on or any music or playing games in the background to distract you. You've got a pen and paper or your notebook. At times you will see this yellow banner appearing. At that point I'd like you to pause the video to complete the task on screen. You can pause the video now to make sure you are ready to start the lesson. If you're all ready, we can begin. So we're going to look at how does a gas exert pressure. Now, in a gas, the particles are not held together um, and they can move freely in all directions. We know that from looking at our, our state particle models previously. Now, if we increase the temperature, the particles will move faster. Again, we know that from looking at changes of state. Uh, as we increase the temperature in a solid, the particles start vibrating more. They've got more kinetic energy. They then break those bonds, and move to a liquid, and again, they can keep increasing in kinetic energy and moving over each other faster as we increase the temperature. When they get to a gas, they will still move faster as we increase the temperature. Obviously, at that point, they can no longer change state. An important definition that you might need for later on is that temperature is an average measure of the kinetic is a measure of the average kinetic energy of all of the particles in a substance i'll say that again temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of all the particles within a substance and we can see here we've got uh, two gases one at a low temperature over here we can see the particles are moving quite slowly they're all still moving they're not joined but they are moving quite slowly. Over here, we have a high temperature. We can see that the particles are moving a lot faster. They're moving faster because they've got more kinetic energy. We're now looking at how exactly the gas does exert pressure. So if we put the gas in a container, the gas will exert a pressure on the walls of the container. So a box or a balloon uh, or a tin. And the equation for pressure is pressure is force divided by area. Have a look at what we mean by force and area. So the force is the total force applied by the particles colliding with the walls of the container. Each time one of the gas particles hits the wall, it will exert a force on it. Now, the faster they are moving, or the more particles there are, the bigger the force will be. We've got a lot of particles hitting. Even if they only hit with a very small force, they will create an overall quite a large force. And if our particles are moving faster, they're going, again going to exert a larger force. Now the area is the total surface area of the container. Um, we also look think of it as the volume as well. The smaller the area, so if there's less space uh, in there, they decrease the volume, we'll have more collisions because we'll have less place, space for the particles to move and they'll make collisions more frequently. And this will mean we have a higher pressure. Obviously, the opposite is true as well. If we have a larger area, uh, there'll be less collisions per unit time and the pressure will be lower. Let's have a look at some of them in action. We've got here, we've got looking at temperature, we've got a cool gas, so it's moving quite slowly. Uh, this thing here is moving so we can measure the pressure. We can see that we're getting collisions happening fairly infrequently and with low energy. Over here, we've now heated the gas up. The particles are moving faster, so they're colliding with more force and they're also colliding more often with the walls of the container. This means we get a higher pressure. We're now looking on this side, we're changing the volume or the total area. In this one we have a larger volume. The particles have more space to move around. We've now decreased the pressure, we're going to get less collisions per unit time. On this one here, we have decreased the volume, so the area has got smaller down to this, but we've halved it. The pressure is increasing. 
the pressure here is increasing. We decrease the volume, increase the pressure. Whereas with temperature, if we increase one, we increase the, the other. So having a think about something, we all know that if we blow up a balloon too much, it will pop. Um, as we're blowing up a balloon, we're putting more particles in there. If there's more particles, there's going to be more collisions, and that will increase the pressure. That's why the balloon will get bigger, because the pressure is forcing it to expand. Um, and the balloon is a stretch material, so it can expand. But what will happen if we increase the temperature of a blown up balloon? So if we have a balloon and we make it warmer. What will happen to the balloon? Pause the video now to have a think about your answer. So what we will see, as we can see here, we are increasing the temperature. The balloon is getting bigger. That is because the pressure is increasing, or the kinetic energy first is increasing, because the temperature's got higher. The kinetic energy of the particles will increase, and they'll collide more often with the sides of the balloon, making a bigger pressure. Now, because the balloon is stretchy, it will expand, and it will keep expanding until it does eventually pop. Well done if you got that right. So there are now six questions for you to have a go at answering. Please pause the video to answer the questions. You should now only be watching if you have answered these questions and are ready to mark them. You can now mark your answers. Well done if you got them all correct. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been informative. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and please have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye bye.